How are you doing? It's great to be here um, and to speak to you guys again. I just quickly introduce myself. My name is Father Rob. I'm a priest of the Diocese of Sandhurst, which is about an hour and a half from Melbourne. Um, I'm uh, just the three things that I do is that I, I've been ordained for four and a half years now. I love being a priest. I often say if I had a thousand lifetimes, I would choose to be a priest in each one. Because there's nothing more beautiful than serving God full time, just giving your heart and your life to God. Um, another thing that I do, is, uh, apart from serving in a parish in a, a parish in Bendigo, I also um, um, uh, I work in full time youth ministry. So I run youth ministry. I'm chaplain to 8,000 students in my hometown alone. And also, the third thing that I do is that I'm a musician. So I, tend, I get to travel around um, Australia, I get to travel around the world, and I get to speak to young people in particular. Over the last four years, I got to speak to over almost 300,000 young people every year. And it's very strange for me to say that because I'm naturally a shy person. I was standing over there, to ready to come out here, and I was shaking. You guys are terrifying. And, but the thing is, I, I never let fear stop me. I am naturally a shy person. I have a little dog, and his name is Gozo. Love him. Such a sweet dog. And my ideal day is just to stay in bed, Gozo by my side, and just chillaxing, not worrying about anything, not doing anything, just relaxing and not facing people. And sometimes we, fa we feel like that as people. We, don't, we need to get out of our comfort zone. So today I want to talk a little bit about One Direction, not the band, but I'm going to talk a little bit about focus, about stopping, about giving our attention to what is most important. Now if you're anything like me, you are pretty much, maybe if not titled so, if not diagnosed so, you are very uh, sometimes ADHD, anyone here has a short attention span. Okay, it, it, um, that's certainly me. I'm, I'm, I'm that type of person that no, no matter how much I try to pay attention to something, I'm always distracted. I'm preparing this talk just to, to speak to you guys. And I was supposed to be there for an hour, but 20 minutes later, I'm still Snapchatting. <laughs> 10 minutes after that, I have to check my Instagram. And then I need to check my Instagram again because I posted something. So I want to, to make sure who liked it and how many likes I got. And I just keep trying, and then I get an email, I need to check an email, then I remember I have to take, send an SMS to someone. And it keeps on going, and next minute the hour is over, and I, have to, and I don't have time to write my talk. And this is how we go, or for example, I'm a, I'm a discipline, I want to make sure that I keep to my diet today, I'm not going to eat any sugars, any carbs, I go to the fridge and I'm ready and focused on that chicken right there and those veggies right there, but there's cakey on the top shelf. <laughs> and I go to focus on the chicken, but all of a sudden the cakey that caught the corner of my eye distracted me from the chicken. And now I'm, I no longer feel like chicken because I feel like cakey. And so what I do is I catch it, just I go open the, the, the cake box and, and I just take a little bit of the icing off the, off the top. It's not really cheating, it's just tasting, just think. But all of a sudden, cakey starts to call me, Rob! And, and that's, that's just not enough, that little cakey is not enough. You have to get the knife and then slice it out, if you grab the knife, or you can grab, put your hand right in. But I decide to be decent, because I live with another two priests, and I, I slice it so that they won't notice that I took it, because they know that I'm on a strict diet. So if they find out I, I messed with cakey, they will, think, they will think that I'm not disciplined enough. So I eat that cakey, and all that time I went in to look for the chicken and to be disciplined, but my ADHD, took me another direction. Dora, love Dora. <laughs> look at it, must study. <laughs> oh look, internet, food, message, Snapchat, a fly on the wall. That's how we are, we're so distracted as a generation. We try to do things. How many of you over the last week have tried to sit down and pray? Anyone? Okay. How many of you 
sort of succeeded. Okay, you guys are an inspiration. Because th that's the same thing, that I go and I try to pray and I sit down and I'm, 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 I'm d get out my Bible. Oh, I can't reach my Bible. I'll use my iPad. Big mistake. Because as I'm doing, I'm checking my iPad, all of a sudden a notification comes up. Someone sent me a message. Someone said something. Someone t commented on my Facebook. And then, uh, again, I was supposed to pray for 15 minutes, but 25 minutes later, I'm still checking Facebook. And we are like that. We're just so distracted. We are a generation that have, have lost our, our discipline, our capability somehow to stop, to sit, and to, to understand what God, what, somehow to stick to something. And this is us as a people. God is speaking to us. God is talking. God is shouting out to us. And he's telling us, pay attention to me. Look, look at me. He's saying, he's looking at us and he's telling us, focus on me. Stop and pay attention. But the thing is, we're so distracted. And then we pray, God, what do you want for my future? What direction do you want me to take in my life? What am I to do? And God, why are you so silent? Why don't you speak? But the thing is, God is speaking, but very often we're too busy. We're too distracted to actually hear God speak. I promise you this. I do promise you this, that God is speaking to you as an individual. He is telling you, God has a plan for your life. Let's just, there's this verse in the Bible. Anyone ever hear, do you know what a Bible is? Anyone? Okay, two. Fantastic. Okay. In the book, um, in the Bible, there's, a, there's a, a chapter called Jeremiah. Everyone say Jeremiah. Jeremiah, this dude, was a prophet full of life. And he used to listen to God's voice. Now, to be a prophet doesn't mean he didn't, he didn't used to say the future, but he used to stop. And he used to listen to God's voice. And he used to listen to God speak. And what he used to hear God say when he stopped and he focused, he used to write down. And he, God gave him this word. And it's an incredible word. That's a word for you. And it says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans not to harm you, but to give you a future. A plans to prosper you. Now God has an incredible plan for your life. And God is telling you, and he wants you to achieve greatness. But sometimes our ADHD, our distraction, our lack of discipline stops us from trying to figure out, from, trying, from understanding what this plan for our life is. Now, I'm not talking about necessarily the plan for your future, what you're going to be, whether you're going to be an architect, a civil engineer, a nun, a priest. It's not only vocation. These are great things that God does speak but I'm talking about your joy, your peace. You know, we spend so much time looking at our screens. And the more we look at our screens, the more addicted we become. That even today, they have to have adverts on television that tell you not to drive and not to look at your phone at the same time. Why? There's a road in front of you. That should be entertaining enough. But we need more entertainment. We need more. Our minds need to be busier because we're so much addicted to being entertained. For, to, uh, uh, we're just so scared of that stillness that we just cannot stop. And, you know, statistically, the more time, uh, it, it works exponentially like this. The more time you spend on Facebook, on social media, the more depressed you can get. And that's horrible. And this is why we need to stop, because God is speaking. God is giving you joy, but sometimes we're just too busy to take it. God is giving us direction in our life, but we're too distracted to take it. There was this guy a few years ago, it's a true story. Anyway, you figure out if it's a true story. And there was this guy, and he was standing there, and he was, as he was standing in his garden, he was looking at these ants, beautiful ants, and they were walking in, in one direction, there you go. And as, as they were walking in this, in this one direction, he noticed, he followed the direction of these ants, and he noticed that they were walking towards this cliff, but not stopping there, actually jumping off the cliff. 
And he started to get confused. And, he and what he did was he tried to stop them from jumping off the cliff. So he gets down on his knees and, and he puts his hand over there so, so they wouldn't jump off the cliff. But what happened? They went around his hand. They just went around his hand because they were just so distracted. They just thought, oh, and they just followed the, 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 the other direction. They kept going and they kept falling off the cliff. Then he decided to do something. He said, okay, I need another approach. I'm going to try and stop them by, by, by shouting at them. Hey, auntie! And stop! You're falling off the cliff! But what happens? They didn't listen. They couldn't listen because he didn't speak ant. Okay? He only spoke human. And so they couldn't understand him. And so they just kept walking off the cliff. But this guy had supernatural power. He said, I tell you what I'm going to do. The only way they are going to listen to me is if I become an ant. So I am going to become an ant. So he goes into his, in his, into his farm box, closes the door, and turns into an ant. And he gets out, he walks out of the phone box, and he walks towards the cliff. And he sees all these ants just walking towards the cliff, so distracted on their phones. And they're just so distracted with the things on their minds, so preoccupied with everything that was going on. And they're walking towards this cliff, and they're jumping off. And so what does he do? He turns towards them, and he says, guys, start shouting in ant. Now he can speak ant. And he's shouting. Saying, guys, don't walk in that direction because you're going to fall off the cliff. Stop. Focus. See what is happening. Look down. They're falling and you're going to fall next and you're going to die. Stop where you are. Now, there were one or two people that stopped and that listened to him. Most of the people just didn't pay attention to him. They were just too distracted. Oh, just another crazy and he just walked. And, uh, and they just walked and they kept falling off the cliff and dying. But some obviously started to get frustrated and started to think, man, this guy is really frustrating me. Every morning I wake up and I just hear this guy screaming and shouting, I've had enough. So they get a team together and what do they do? They kill this little ant. They crucify this little ant. And they say, finally, we're free from this. Now, some of you would have already seen this, but this is pretty much what God does, has done for us. That God became human. We were crying out, God, where are you? Give us hope. Where are you? Which God are you? Show us, give us direction. Show us where to go. But we wouldn't listen. And so we kept walking off the cliff. And so what does Jesus do? God comes down and becomes a human being, a little ant like us, that can speak human like us. And he tells us, guys, this is the direction we need to go. But some of us today, even today, are so distracted with our own lives, are so focused on the things that we, we, are, we, we are doing and just with our futures and with, with our busyness and with our social media and with everything else, that we miss the point, we miss what God is doing in our life and we're crying out then we're about to fall off the cliff we're hanging there and we're saying Jesus why didn't you save me where are you why aren't you helping me and Jesus is saying listen I was there I am here but you just need to stop you just need to stop there's a beautiful um, reading uh, Psalm 46 which says be still and know that I am God I love this be still and know that I am God. Now, how many of you have ever seen this or read this in a chapel or somewhere still as you're praying? Okay, let me just put you in the context of what this is. This is in the context of a war. So just before, in the verse before, there are these soldiers that are sent by God, they thought, to go out into the wilderness and to go and fight. So they're sharpening their swords, they're preparing their battle cries, they're working for God, and they're going out to fight, to start a war. And they're all excited and they're all working for God, and then all of a sudden God says this, He says, guys, be still. Now, it's not about be still, be quiet, take off your shoes, genuflect, and kneel down and say your prayers. That's not at all what he's saying. 
What he's saying there is the word in Maltese, which is iskot, in Hebrew, which is iskot. Everybody say iskot. The word iskot, literally translated, is shut up. <laughs> shut up. So he's, these guys are all excited, sharpening their swords, ready to fight, ready to war. And God looks at them and says, guys, you are my soldiers, but just shut up. And know that I am God. Stop trying so hard. Stop working for me so hard and not stop and think about me. Stop trying to be my soldier without having a relationship with me. And this is how we do it. We go to things like, like Ignite and, and to Mass and we do things, but sometimes we, we don't, we're in the activity, but we don't shut up and listen. There's that song by Neil, So Let Me Love You. You know the song? I sang it totally flat, but... That song, so let me love you and I will love you until you learn to love yourself. This is what the psalm is saying. It's saying, be still, shut up and let me love you. Shut up and let me love you. Imagine in our, the busyness of our life, in our prayer, we can switch off our phones. We can switch off our minds and our distractions and just say, God, I have no idea what to tell you, but just give me a hug. Just let me let you love me. How awesome is that? This is what it's about. It's about stopping. It's about first thing, we need to stop and let God love us. Let God give us a hug. Stop trying so hard to be holy. Stop trying so hard to be good. Stop trying so hard to resist keiki. And just let God love you. If you're focused on the love of God, keiki won't be that much of a temptation. If you really, you know, like, okay, I can't do this because I need to fit into my wedding dress next week. That love for your fiancé, that love the, to, to look good, will be enough willpower for you to resist keiki. And this is the thing with us. We need to be in love with God. If we are in love with God, then we find the strength. So that's number one. The first thing we need to do is just to stop and to recognize that Jesus is there, to shut up and let him love us. Amen? Amen. The second thing is that we need to focus. We need to focus, we need to set our attention on this love of God. There's another verse in the Bible, and Matthew 5, 8. It says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, this again can be so misinterpreted. When we start to think of blessed are the pure in heart as sexual purity. Now that's fantastic, that's important. This is so good and so um, that, that we need to offer this to God and if I say anything against that, Kim will kill me. So, no, because that's what she, she spends most of her time talking about. But that's true. That is so true. We need to offer our sexual purity, everything we need to offer to God. But that what it's talking about there is blessed are those who are focused on me, who have one pure motive, one pure intention, and that is to follow me, to look at me. Even though Keiki is shouting at, at me, I'm focusing on the chicken, and that's all my attention is going to be on, that chicken. Because if I spend too much time thinking about Keiki, that's what I'm going to feel like. And so God says, put your attention on me, focus on me, look at me. But that is the hardest thing to do. It is so hard, so hard to focus on God. It is so hard to focus on God. You tell me how hard it is at school to focus on God when no one around us is focusing on God. I'm going to sing a song and then I'm just going to finish off with three quick points. But this song talks about... The three things that I'm going to talk about, the, the importance of keeping our heart and our lives focused on a God who loves us. It's about a God who loves us so much that he became an ant, he became a human being just like us so that we could focus on him. So it will be easier for us to focus on him and to love him. Why are 
Are you running away? So far from all that you know is true What has the world done to you? You get up Only to find that you're crushed again Beneath the weight of your loneliness There is a way if only you would trust So reach out To the hands that are longing to save Little boy, don't wipe the tears from your eyes. The darkness be your only company. You can still be all you wanna be. You can still be all you wanna be. So reach out. The hands that are longing to save you and cry out to the one who has loved you and made you to the God who will never forsake you. So reach out. the hands that are longing to save you and cry out to the one who has loved you and made you to the God who will never forsake you it is so hard to focus on God it's hard to focus on God when there's so many things distracting us from God. It is hard at school when we're the only ones who are following God. It is hard to follow God when we're in, 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 even with our family that somehow don't understand God. Even if you have a family, you have your children around you, it is so hard to focus on God. It is hard. But I think it just takes three simple but yet complicated things to do every day. We cannot survive our faith alone. It's impossible to be a Christian alone. It's impossible. If you don't have these three pillars, it's impossible to have faith today. And one, I'll talk about the three things quickly. The first thing is prayer. It's a time where we stop and we shut up and we let God love us. Spending two minutes, three minutes a day in a still place. And I'm not talking while we're checking our emails or while we're taking selfies, while we're in the Adoration Chapel or while we're doing something else. But stop and focus. Give your own attention to God. Our God is a jealous God that wants your attention. Even just three to five minutes a day, stop and let God love you. Shut up and let God give you a hug. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we need community. We need each other. We need the church. And this is so beautiful that you guys are here because you recognize that you cannot live your faith alone. You need the people around you. You need the Ignite community. You need the, the Catholic community that supports you and strengthens you to become all that you can be. Plant yourself in a community. Get to a youth group. Get to a place where you can experience faith together. You cannot do it alone. And the third thing, the third thing is the sacraments. Keep close to Jesus in the sacraments. Keep close to Jesus in the Eucharist who gives us the strength to live out our faith when nobody is watching. 
When we mess up, we know that God is merciful and we can go to, to God in the sacrament of reconciliation. And it's as though we're justified, just as if I'd never done it. We're made clean. We're made whole again. God is mercy in the sacraments. Stay close to your parish community that supply, that give the sacraments to you. How awesome that God gives us all of these things to stay focused. But you have to fight for them. You have to fight for them. It's your choice. There's two things in front of you always. There's always going to be cakey there. Always. But it's up to you whether you want to focus. What do you want more? What do you want more? Do you want Jesus more? If you want Jesus more, if you want peace more, if you want fullness of life more, then you have to make these decisions. And these decisions are made easier when you have a life of prayer, when you have a life surrounded by a community, when you have a life nourished by the beautiful sacraments that God has given us. I'm going to finish off here and I'm going to ask the, the band to come forward. But I just want you before we do anything, and I know that like I'm to talking to you here and you're thinking, man, how am I going to do this? I want God. I, I want to be close to God. I want to experience God, but it's so hard. It's so hard. And you'd start, maybe some of you have had faith, but all of a sudden you started to leak slowly and you've moved away from God. Or maybe you have a friend here who has experienced faith and you want to be like them. I want to quickly pray for you and then I'll let the band take over here. But I want you to pray this prayer with me, a prayer that's saying, God, I need you. I need your presence. I need your joy. I need your peace. I've had enough of this cakey. I've had enough of, of these distractions. And now I need you. I need true food. I need true nourishment. I need peace. I need your presence. I need your love. So maybe if you just bow your heads and or close your eyes if you're comfortable in doing that. And just pray. And maybe you can pray this prayer after me in your hearts. And make this your own prayer. So you can pray this in the silence of your hearts. Lord Jesus, I want to know you. I want to know your love. I want to know your peace. I want to know your joy and the freedom that comes with knowing and loving you. You know how hard I find it to follow you. I want to follow you, but there are too many distractions. Lord, you've called me to your direction. But Lord, there are many voices around calling me and it's too hard. Lord, I want to hear and now give you my heart. I want to give you my distractions. I want to give you my sinfulness. Lord, I lay my sins down before you and I ask for your forgiveness. And Lord, I want a hug. Give me a hug, Lord. Embrace me, Lord. Give me your Holy Spirit. Hold me close to you. Lord, because if you let go for one second, just one second, I'll mess up. So hold me. Hold me tight. And never let go. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I give you my future. Teach me to pray. Open doors for me to enter into this community of believers and Lord I say yes to your sacraments I say yes to you come into my heart Lord Jesus this life and this heart is yours